I, mean, I remember there being something about your hands where you take the palm of your hand, you kind of bend your fingers back. Aren't the lines in your hand, they're supposed to go more red to where you yeah. can see the blood flow but, versus- Yeah, they'll go more red, which is a sign of just better circulation. So if you take your hand like this and you see the, the lines here, see how they get redder? But if you're That's, anemic, I'm guessing you may not get as much red color in the lines. Yeah, because the heme, the heme portion of the hemoglobin has that kind of red or more pinky tone to it. So when that hemoglobin is low, that pinky tone's less, so you have that more of that pale kind of outlook. So you won't have that, you know, that the rosy, you know, if your skin's more fair or white skin, you won't have that like rosiness to it. It just kind of stays pale. Yeah. Once again, so that's more of like a, Hey, here's a free at home test. You bend your, mm -hmm. bend your fingers back, look at the lines in the palm of your hand. And if they don't go red, maybe it's related. Do a blood, do a blood panel and figure it out. Yep, exactly. So let's go talk about some other nails here. So we have a couple other nails I wanted to talk about. Uh, of course, we have clubbing as well. So when we see clubbing, it's literally it looks like a little hoof at the end where you see a little curvature at the end of the nail. And a lot of times that's from oxygen deficiency. So that could be from extreme low iron. Uh, that could be from a lot of respiratory distress, whether it's like sleep apnea or some kind of like just COPD just you're not able to really take on oxygen appropriately. And then that low oxygen level can really cause that clubbing effect. So you could see it with lung issues. You could see it with kidney issues, liver issues, heart issues, um, dietary, you know, IBS issue, immuno issues, uh, like AIDS, things like that. But a lot of times there's some inability to transfer and carry oxygen appropriately in the body. Makes sense. So you're looking at bigger picture pathology. People that have that level of clubbing, they're already going to be on the conventional medicines radar as some kind of a diagnosis already being there. So mm -hmm. you work on stabilizing that, but then you want to get to the root issue, especially if you have like, you see, you can see clubbing with some autoimmune issues too. And autoimmunity, obviously lots of inflammation in the body. So you, you know, you stabilize with the conventional medical docs and then you work on getting to the root cause after. Yeah, I would say autoimmunity could be linked to any of these, wouldn't you? I mean, because think about if you've yep, got any autoimmunity of that, let's say you've got Hashimoto's and now your thyroid's slowing down. We know that hypothyroidism could cause some of these nail issues as well. So, yep. so I would just say if, if you got messed up nails and you're autoimmune, you could blame it as, as that being a, a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, and also petting nails too. We'll see that's associated with psoriasis, which is autoimmunity. Um also writer syndrome as well. So a lot of pitting nails, which these conditions have an effect on connective tissue. We look at autoimmunity as well. So anytime we see pitting nails or even just the, the, the clubbing nails or any type of nail issue, autoimmunity is so big because the gut interplays. And once you start messing up iron and vi fat soluble vitamins and good fat digestion and protein digestion and B vitamin absorption, especially B12, you could see a lot of these physical presentations with the nails. It's totally possible. Yep. Okay, excellent. Um, next, we have, I would say you have the horizontal nails as well. That could easily be from scarlet fever. We learned that one in school. And of course, scarlet fever, uh, I think it's a, it's a staph infection, I think. And that can easily affect the heart too and create heart valve problems as well. Um, these are horizontal lines or Bose lines. That can also be due to psoriasis as well or any type of circulation issue because Scarlet fever can easily affect the lungs and potentially the heart. So that's always a possibility. Any comments? Uh, I don't know much about scarlet fever. So no, I don't have anything to add to that. Okay, excellent. Um, anything else you want to talk about after that? The easy one that some people forget that they did something to their nail. Like if you smash your, smash your fingers in a door or like you shut the car, the kid shuts the car on your nail. And sometimes people forget, they'll say, oh my God, I've got this black spot under my nail. You know, Bob Marley died of melanoma under his big toenail. He had a dark spot under his big toenail. And he said, really? well, yeah. And he said, well, the, the Rastafarian mindset is you, you, you don't amputate any of your, your parts because they wanted to cut off his big toe to get rid of the melanoma. And he's like, nope, I didn't want to do it. And then unfortunately the melanoma killed him. So, so yes, a dark spot under the nail could be a possible skin cancer. It's rare, but it's possible. So in some cases, a dermatologist may want to look at dark spots under the nails, but a lot of times it's, oh, I banged my, my hand to get something and I forgot. And now I've got yeah. a little bit of some blood under there. 
And just poor digestion, not digesting and absorbing a lot of these good fat, soluble vitamins, fats, and proteins can be a big one and vitamins and minerals too. We have Terry's nails as well. So Bo's nails are going to be the horizontal lines, kind of more midline. Terry's nails are going to be the white strip at the very top. And that's also going to be a horizontal line as well at the very, very top. So you'll see kind of a big white strip at the very, very top. And that one, you know, some of these ones can mean, you know, more significant issues. I mean, they can mean different types of potential liver issues, kidney issues, diabetes. So the more unhealthy you get, the more your nails just really go to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. You have the yeah. Terry nails. Think of in school, we learned Terry nails, T for tip, T for tip. And then bows, bows, you know, closer to the base, B for base, kind of Terry's horizontal here, bows more in the middle, closer to the base. And then autoimmunity plays a big role. And then more of your bigger issues like kidney, liver, um, cardiovascular issues, COPD, we can start to see more clubbing issues. And then of course, psoriasis is connected to, you know, a lot of these different ones in general. Let's just briefly mention cuticle health too. You know, cuticle mm -hmm. health, I would say is correlated with the nails. My cuticles back when I had a lot of gut issues, my cuticles were always red and puffy and inflamed. And I don't know if it was directly correlated. All I can tell you is that my cuticles look much better now. So I think if cuticles are irritated, maybe it's because you're picking on your nails. Maybe it's the way you're biting your nails. If you're a biter, it could be something like that. But to me, I think cuticles are correlated somehow. Yeah, I think it's good every now and then to go get your nails done and just have those cuticles really opened up. I like talking it about how the cuticle grows up over the nail. You're having, yep. talking about those getting pushed back. Yep, getting pushed back and trimmed out. I like that. I'll do that maybe once once a year or what twice a year.